Thank you. Thank you. So let's get started, Jenny. <laughs> Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank everyone uh, for attending. Jamie and I, we are very happy to be here uh, sharing our study results um, and what we have done with teachers. So we're going to be talking about Minecraft as an immersive language teaching world, specifically focusing on the study we did with English teachers, technological, pedagogical, and content knowledge level. So Jane, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yeah, thank you for being here. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce um, Minecraft in the immersive world. And uh, we're gonna talk about the language of gaming, TPAC, that was uh, mentioned earlier in the keynote speech by Betsy. Um, and we're gonna talk about how we conducted this study um, and what teaching pedagogy was um, introduced uh, to the uh, elementary school English teachers as well as the results and the lessons plans that they've created, um, the Minecraft lesson plans and the um, tools, tech tools that they integrated um, for their lessons. And in the end, um, we kind of sum it up with um, their perceptions of the merits and challenges and affordances of um, Minecraft as, a, as an immersive role for English language learning and teaching. Yeah. So let's start by talking about Minecraft, the game, okay? Um, also, let's take a look at the definition of what immersive environment is. So immersive environments are digitally mediated learning environments designed to engage users in an artificially created make-believe world. So this is a very uh, important definition to, and that's what we, Jane and I have been using uh, to guide our research. Go ahead. And um, it's related to the mental state of the user. So when we think of the students um, in this environment, we need to um, think about the mental state that they go through. Um, and being absorbed and engaged with an activity. So uh, from this point on, go ahead. Uh, we can think of the types of immersion that occur uh, when they are involved in this environment. For example, the narrative and symbolic one, we have the virtual identities. Um, it's an environment that fosters simulated experiences it's like he, uh, they are leaving the story that I created for them. And the second type of immersion that we go through in this type of environment is the sensory one because it creates an emotional connection as we feel part of the virtual world. It's also actionable when we create, uh, when this space become dynamic, it promotes interaction and also active participation. And psychologically, it embeds knowledge and skills. So when we combine all these types of immersion, we can create really um, interesting learning experience and it become more effective for learners as well. Go ahead, Jenny. So Jenny and I defined this space. Go back a little bit, Jenny. Yes. Oh, it's going. Okay. Go. Yeah. Just so make sure that beyond the being a game, it's also in a 3D environment, very customizable where we can actually engage learners in this make-believe world. And the more it becomes like um, this uh, environment where they are invested, they become engaged and sometimes completely really absorbed uh, with the activity. Go ahead. Okay, and um, I kind of introduced uh, to my uh, students, uh, the English teachers, the, the language of gaming. And this is what I borrowed from the language triptych for, for CLIL by COIL. Um, 
and adapted it into this um, con within this context. And I reminded them when they're planning for a Minecraft lesson, they could think about the language of gaming, which is the language that that is used in within the game um, of Minecraft, including blocks and items or actions that they uh, perform within the game, like smelting, building, creating, um, um, uh, crafting, and all that. And also uh, the different biomes, there are desert biome, forest biome, um, oceanic biomes, and um, uh, the ecosystem within the Minecraft that allows them uh, more a variety of vocabulary um, for, for the learners to learn uh, within that context. And the language for gaming is that is um, it comprises of the language functions that learners can use within when they are interacting with online players and um, you know going for the, the quests um, or tasks within the game and collaborating or pop problem solving the type of language that is involved and here we're talking about English language uh, teaching for primary school students and so um, this language would be a very simple so they could think about um, the language that they uh, would like to focus on um, and to help the kids interact within that that uh, Minecraft lesson that they wanted um, their students to learn. And language through gaming in, in, is in fact like, um, you know, language, the new language that, that are learned through um, interaction within the, the Minecraft game. And so this is something that um, to raise uh, my students, my teachers um, awareness as to the language part of the Minecraft lesson. Okay, um, Rose is going to talk about TPAC. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, TPAC was the framework that we used to, to base on our um, instrument for the survey of the study. But basically, when we think of the TPAC, we are talking about three dimensions in which teachers need to. to uh, be fairly competent on to be able to um, teach, right? So it starts with the content knowledge itself of the subject they are going to teach, then the pedagogical knowledge, which is how to teach that content. And then when they integrate the technology, what kind of knowledge they need to have of that technology. So when we combine these domains, uh, we have then different sets of the competences and all of the three domains together is the technological pedagogical content and knowledge that we need to have as a whole set of competence. Applying it to Minecraft, when we're talking about the technology, we can actually uh, think of uh, learning about the installation, how to install the game, how to use the controls, the mechanics, everything that pertaining is specifically about the technology. When it comes to Minecraft content and the English content, it's not just only the language itself, um, the language from the curriculum that teacher needs to know, but also the content that he emerges uh, through the gameplay. And finally, uh, we also thought of the pedagogical principles and the decisions that teachers need to make when they are in this environment to be able to apply Integrate Minecraft. Okay, so our research purpose is to investigate English teachers TPAC before and after they've received the PD training and um, you know, integrating Minecraft into their English teaching practices. And what we did was um, um, we have 29 in-service English elementary school English teachers who participated in our, our study. And um, they had 16 hours of a professional training provided by myself and Rose um, within two months. And um, we gave them a Minecraft TPAC survey that was adapted and modified based on the Gary and the TESOL EJ uh, journal and also um, uh, a Schmidt um, 2009 um, um, survey and um, including a Minecraft aspect to the TPAC survey. And it, it was a five point liquor scale, seven constructs and 30 items and the um, 
reliability was a Kronbach Alpha 0.96. So it's a very reliable um, instrument. And in the end, they were able to create five Minecraft lesson, lessons, um, you know, uh, when they teamed up in groups. Okay, Rose is gonna talk about um, the training and the pedagogy. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the participants were provided uh, training in how to use Minecraft ed Education Edition and also uh, licenses so they could practice uh, on their, in their own time and they work together in a multiplayer world. Um, okay, go ahead. Uh, the design, uh, the, the lesson design training, we, we based on task-based learning teaching. So we, we provided teachers with um, live sessions, also supporting materials uh, for them to read uh, as a step-by-step -step how to design. We walk them through, with, through workshops to work collaboratively. And basically the, the lesson cycle, design cycle that we used was, first they would go into Minecraft to experiment, to identify what type of Minecraft tasks they could actually come up with. Um, then map out the language. Um, and here it's important to, to go back to the part where Jane talked about the language for gaming. Um, that she introduced the in-person to the teachers. And then after that, defining the language learning objective, like what they want to focus on with the students and the assessment, how they were going to assess learning outcome. Then going to in-game, prepare the task and the area, build, you know, um, get everything ready for students, and then afterwards create pre-tasks and post-tasks to support the, the learning in game. At the time of the training, we also had a Facebook group running, um, and there, uh, uh, during the PD, we asked them to reflect continuously about the um, about the, the what they were learning and the challenge also to check how they were um, actually perceiving that learning process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically um, we wanted to remind them that they could re um, create synchronous tasks first and then to design an asynchronous, asynchronous task, the pre-task and the post-task and um, their reflection. Mm -hmm. So um, this is the result of our study. Um, if you could take a look uh, here um, uh, at the table here, you, you can see that um, um, all of these uh, seven uh, constructs for them, they have their pre-test scores or uh, lower than all the post-test scores and that um, for all seven concepts, uh, we did a um, t-test on them and they were all significantly different, meaning that their um, gains in their post, um, you know, PD, that they are more confident, uh, more confident in terms of their TPAC um, in integrating Minecraft into their um, English lessons. And for this, I like to point out, like for Minecraft content knowledge, you can see here their pre test pre um, pre test was uh, one point nine. Seven and um, you know these were the the, the items on the um, survey. Um, I am able to create Minecraft materials for course content, or I am able to use various digital tools to integrate Minecraft content into the course. And in their post um, test, it, they um, post survey they uh, it was they scored um, 3.878. Uh, 7, and uh, the only the single um, construct that were non significant was the pedagogical and content knowledge um, I have here, and uh, we wonder why. And we went back and uh, took a look uh, at the items on PCK uh, pedagogical content knowledge, and you can take a look at the the um, items here. Without using technology, I am able to select 
create uh, ele uh, select ele effective teaching approaches that help my students to develop their language skills. So this is without the technology. And the second item would be without using technology, I'm able to prepare cult uh, curricular activities and lesson plans that um, will improve my students' language. And if you can take a look here, so without technology, these two parts would be something that they, they are already very uh, familiar and confident about um, as an English teacher. Um, um, so that's why that there were no significant difference pre and post. But um, for but for things um, that involve technology, uh, technological knowledge, which is Minecraft, incorporating Minecraft, in integrating um, pedagogy or integrating content wise, um, there were you know significant significant difference on um, pre and post. So um, basically, we think that it's overall the PD um, within 16 hours PD was was really effective and uh, really. Uh, um, boosted their confidence in, in their knowledge of um, Minecraft in English lessons. So here are some of the lesson plans that they produced and um, Rose and I would like to talk about um, them. As you can see here, um, this is, you know, so for those, in, for English teachers, um, the first thing they come up with, uh, you know, using Minecraft as the virtual environment, they use their textbooks uh, based um, and sentence structures that were introduced in the elementary schools to, to as their objectives um, of um, let allowing students to practice. So, in one of the lessons, it was um, about where where's uh, Lucy, and she is in the living room, and students are introduced: living room, bathroom, kitchen, and um, what they wanted the students to do is to go, go into the rooms and and you can actually interact with these um, uh, NPCs and click on them and and talk to them and then find out uh, you know do the task within the uh, Minecraft uh, uh, virtual world. Okay, Rose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in this lesson, for example, uh, they they created um, they focus on the different types of animals that is in Minecraft, and they created a maze and a gap um, gap information activity for students to run with the students. Right, Jane? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I yeah, and I really like the uh, maze that they've created. See how. It, um, how many hours that that uh, went into creating a game like this? Um, this is actually an information gap game. game. Um, so people, you know, they split uh, uh, students up into teams, and mm -hmm. some of them are in the maze, and some of them are out up here uh, where where I took the pictures. And um, they the language objectives is to give directions um, and to um, uh, lead their teammates to the chest uh, with like placed in the mains. I, mean, I I was really impressed with what the teachers were able to do in terms of creating lessons uh, and building those lessons uh, into Minecraft and the supporting material as well. Um, it's really impressive for such a short with some guidance, uh, teachers can do a lot of things, even though they are still developing their gaming, um, their gaming skills. They, they, they bring to, to, the, to the process their own um, pedagogical and content knowledge, and they are able to modify and get very creative, especially when they are collaborating with other teachers. Yeah, very impressive. Go ahead, Jane. Okay. And this one, uh, one of the teams created this castle with a flag and um, it, uh, you know, they have, they set up the scenarios within the castle, they would look at signs in a story and they need to, uh, you know, go search and uh, complete tasks. Um, if, and there are buttons set up to answer some questions. And you, if you, if you didn't, 
if you don't get it right, you will be teleported to somewhere else. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, um, uh, very creative. Okay. Um, so um, Rose also, you know, also introduced to the uh, to the English teachers that what they can do with before they actually ask students to invite students into the Minecraft world, they, you know, you need to design a pre-task or uh, some type of teaching and preparing the students with the language of gaming and language for gaming. And some of the tools that were used, uh, uh, created by the uh, English teachers were Kahoot, Quizlet, Bamboozle, and um, Nearpod. Um, and, uh, if you go on to Kahoot and you know, key in um, Minecraft animals, you there are um, you know questions already there um, that was built in based on Minecraft um, uh, things um, and uh, Quizlet as well. You know they they would ask the students to um, uh, go to Quizlet and practice some of the vocabularies and. And this bamboozle, you know, um, they could set students in, up into different teams and engage them in, in, um, in the target uh, language uh, sentence structures and, and that. And so it doesn't have to be these, uh, I, would, I would think it, it would be best if it's, um, you know, Minecraft uh, pick photos, but for this group, they had a regular photo and I, I think that's fine as well. Yes, I would like also to to comment to that. Yeah. Um, teachers can can actually integrate anything with Minecraft um, that they are used to. Even uh, um, when when they look into their curriculum or textbook they are using, you know, there are various ways that we can do it, and uh, they are all very engaging. Just as we use any other other technology. Uh, in our classroom to complement our textbook, Minecraft can be easily used it also to complement and students love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and also, you know, during this pandemic, everybody's learning from home and kids like, love a place to hang out. And if you can set up um, systematic, uh, you know, structured lessons for the kids, I think they, they would love to participate. Um, and this is why we're promoting Minecraft for English language learners, especially kids. Yeah. So merits, um, and these are um, the teachers' uh, reflections um, after the PD. And you know, one of the things was that we found out that these English teachers, um, students taught them to build in Minecraft and they were getting help from the students um, because they were having difficulty at first, um, getting dizzy, not knowing how to navigate within Minecraft, but their students were there to help and they thought it was a very motivating uh, tool and students were even more motivated than the teachers. And so this is one of the things that are really nice for um, to use Minecraft as a tool for kids is that you, your students are more motivated than yourself and um, they would you know be instantly ready for you to teach them in minecraft um, and um, that's one of the things it's learner agency um, active learning in the immersive world and there's so much possibilities yeah in fact it's uh, really a great way to actually collaborate with the students ourselves uh, that's that's the experience I've been, been having myself when using Minecraft. And this is amazing, you know, like how much we can help them uh, with the language, you know, but they can also help us back with the knowledge that they have of Minecraft. And they love, you know, teaching um, us about it to be our teacher as well, mentor us. So that's so awesome. Continue. Um, but when we talk about the challenge, oh, sorry, are you going to comment today? No. No, no, no. Oh. No, worried about the time. <laughs> We're almost <laughs> running. Um, yeah, but when we, when we talk about the challenges, uh, we need to take into consideration that um, it's really time consuming uh, to actually um, to create those lessons in Minecraft, especially if the teacher is not 
competency act, uh, competency um, in using Minecraft. Mm -hmm. So we, we, through teachers' feedback and con reflections, mm -hmm. uh, he is one of them, right? That says that building something in Minecraft is definitely time consuming. The language content is more difficult than the linguist objectives from an elementary school teacher's perspective. But anyway, I still believe my students like this word and have fun with the maze. So uh, across the, 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 the feedback from teachers and reflections, we could see that that was one of the biggest challenges for them, you know, mm -hmm. how difficult it was to mm -hmm. do something by themselves at this point and uh, how time consuming it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last but not least, the affordances and right here um, from reading uh, one of the teachers um, feedback, um, she said that she tried it out with her special education uh, class and um, with students who are diagnosed with slightly intellectually disabled and they were she was surprised that they knew Minecraft already and she was eager to try more of Minecraft. Um, uh, for the, uh, the kids with special needs. Um, and that really uh, was very uh, surprising to me as well. And um, I see like a lot more possibilities uh, of incorporating uh, Minecraft in, uh, to, in, in um, English teaching. And also um, this, uh, one of the, the teacher was saying that it's really very difficult at first, but then um, with collaboration with other teachers, um, they, they've managed, she's managed to um, get navigate in the Minecraft world and build lessons um, in the world. And um, they really went into uh, see how you know, the task that kids can really um, be engaged in, in Minecraft and that's uh, language appropriate. Um, and also for future possibilities, remember I said they, they they designed the lessons based on um, and parallel to the textbooks that are that they currently teach. But here, uh, she sees more possibilities. She would like to build lessons that are um, not from the textbook, not textbook based, but based on the Minecraft environment. There are more like you know uh, lessons um, that can be incorporated using Minecraft. So that's basically it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Ready for questions? <laughs> yeah. Yay, thank you, Vance. I think oh, we Vance have is, done it within the time as well, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, within the time. Vance is who brought us in Minecraft um, MOOC community and uh, started the Minecraft MOOC for Evo and God got me in into Minecraft as well. Do you have any questions? Hello, Vance. Oh yeah, he's here. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, I, you guys. Uh, I just opened a space. You brought us into Minecraft. Really good job. Really great presentations. Let us see where you Thank went with. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That Rob. was a great study. Mm -hmm. Oh, let Thank me see. You. The Rob camera. raised it. Rob, Rob, would you like to say something? Yeah, I, I was just curious. Did, did you have any trouble uh, making sure every student had a computer or a tablet to use? Any any challenges with that? Mm -hmm. Well, um, our first challenge was to actually get teachers on mine, onto Minecraft. And when I started this course, it's a computer assisted language learning course uh, for graduate students. And um, I opened up two options, and this is one of the options for final project. And Believe it or not, no, but only three teachers purchased Minecraft copies. And, and with that, I couldn't really start my lessons on PDs based on this. And so what I did was um, I, I purchased the um, uh, education version and it's cheaper that way, but it's, uh, it's an institutional license. The university has to set it up for me. And um, that's how I solved the problem. Yeah, so, so first with the, teachers and then um, if they, um, we, we were like, uh, some of us stu uh, students were principals or, you know, um, and I really encourage, she's really interested in, and she's been thinking about um, purchasing Minecraft education version licenses for uh, her school and her kids as well. Yeah, so 
Thank you. Uh, need to talk to the administration. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rob, for your question. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm afraid we've reached the allotted time. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation, Jane and Rose. It was Yay. super exciting and interesting. Um, if you have any further questions, please move to the lounge so that you can continue with your conversation. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Van. Thank you. Thank you.